Here's the situation, gents. You wake up and the house is on fire. You gotta make a decision. Am I gonna save my shoe collection or am I gonna save my boot collection? Well, in today's video, gents, I'm gonna make the case for boots and why they're the best shoes a man can have in his wardrobe. First up, let's talk durability. And to illustrate this point, I took a pair of boots, I took a pair of shoes, and I cut them in half. Now, these are well-built dress shoes. When I look at the design right here, I look at the upper. We're using a quality leather. We've actually got three layers. So, we've got an inner lining. I'm looking here at the sole. We've got multiple layers of the sole. They used a Blake stitch to bring it all together. Overall, a good build. Now, that being said, when I come over and look at the build of the boot, I immediately notice this is built to be more durable. So, right here, the upper, it's about 25% thicker. They're using a heavier leather right here on the upper part of the sole and that inside insulating layer is also going to be thicker. So, overall, we've got a thicker upper. Then I go look at the sole. I see we actually have a cork lining here. So, that's extra. We didn't see that on the dress shoes. In addition, we've got this nice rubber extra lining in here with a Goodyear welt construction. So, Goodyear welt is going to be more durable than a Blake stitch. Both of them are great construction, but Blake stitch is going to be more for dress shoes. You want to make sure on your boots that you're getting a Goodyear welt construction. Next up, we look at the thickness of that right heel right there. That is a thick heel. I can see it's done right with multiple layers. This is what I'm looking for in a durable build. All that being said, the proof is in the pudding when it comes to durability. And what are the shoes that I default to, especially when you've got inclement weather during the entire fall, winter, and even spring season? Guys, for me, it's boots. This pair right here, I've had for four years. And yes, I need to do some work on them. I could probably get some edge dressing on this. Point being is that these things are durable. They've held up to multiple seasons, to snow, to sleep terrain and that's what I love about boots. You're looking for boots that are going to have that durable thick upper that's going to be able to resist salt damage, be able to resist water damage because you take care of it but also because the leather is built to withstand this. Now, gents, all the boots and all the shoes you're going to see in today's video are brought to you by today's sponsor, Thursday Boots. Guys, I've been talking about Thursday Boots for years because I love what these guys do. They bring you versatile, durable, well-built boots at an affordable price. Now, gents, I've got over 30 pairs of Thursday boots here. I love their designs. I love their styles and I wear these boots. This pair right here, I've had for over four seasons. It's a great pair of boots. What I love about it, it's a classic design and they keep improving upon their classic designs. This right here, very similar in design, but they made a few modifications, a few changes. Notice the color, that steel color. This is going to separate you from the crowd. At the same time, you're going to wear a style that you really like. Maybe you want the zipper right here where a lot of you guys don't want to be tying, untying your shoelaces all the time. You want something simple. You can slip off and slip on. Boom, you got the zipper right there. Just a really nice pair. This pair of Chelsea's right here, absolutely love the design, the look of the upper. Slip on, easy, comfortable, and look at that sole. Look at that traction. If you need something that's going to be able to get traction during the winter, something whenever the weather, yeah, is getting pretty bad, this is going to be a great pair for you. You can be able to wear this with jeans, maybe a pair of odd trousers, and look great. A style that I'm absolutely loving this fall and winter is the President in Mahogany. Now, the President line's been around for a long time. They've been putting this thing out, but they're always coming out with new colors, new designs. So, if you haven't been to their website, go check out all the new looks. This pair right here is going to work great whether we're light colored odd trousers or if I decide maybe with a pair of gray uh, flannels or I could wear this with jeans. Colors like this, incredibly versatile and that's what I love about Thursday boots. They stick with the classic designs. Now, if that's too boring for you, you want something a little bit more fashion forward, check out these Jodapers right here in olive green weather resistant suede and that weather resistance is key because if you're going to wear suede on your shoes, you want something that can deal with the mud, the grime, the dirt, the snow. So, right here, I've had these for over two years. Absolutely love the style and the look. And like I said, Thursday always coming out with new designs, new look. Maybe you want something suede, you want something casual, but if you're going to be wearing it, let's say with odd trousers, gray flannels, this would be a great option right here. Just beautiful open lacing system, a pair of bluchers in that weather resistant suede. Or if you want something you can wear with jeans and you're going to be dealing with really bad inclement weather. You live in the Midwest like I do, you get mud, you get sleet, you get rain. Look at that traction right here with the bottom. You got that heavier lacing system. So, these work great with jeans. But uh, yeah, just whatever you're looking for, you can find it when it comes to shoes and boots over at Thursday Boots. Gents, I'm linking to Thursday Boots down in the description of today's video with the best deal you're going to find out there on the web. Use that link. Go check out Thursday Boots. 
Absolutely love this company. Every time I'm in New York, I go visit these guys. They're the real deal. An amazing company that is helping you get quality boots at an affordable price. If you're looking for boots, you want to go check out Thursday. Seriously, one of my favorite companies and they just make great quality footwear, which I'm proud to bring to you. Next up, let's talk about build. And I alluded to it when I started talking about a Goodyear construction versus a Blake stitch, but let's go into this in a bit more detail. So why do I love the Goodyear welt? Because the Goodyear welt basically has an extra part in here. It's called the welt and it basically connects that upper to the lower and it makes the shoe a bit water resistant. It's also going to be one of the more expensive ways to basically manufacture boots. So that's why the price knocks up on Goodyear welt. Now, Blake stitch, we're going to see this commonly in dress shoes. That's where the stitching is done on the inside and there isn't a welt. Basically, the upper is directly connected to the lower part of the sole. This is a decent construction, but it's not going to be as weather resistant. Now, what about glued shoes? Should you always avoid them? The answer is actually no. And this may surprise some of you guys because yes, I'm going to say most boots boots and most dress shoes, you want to avoid it, but there are certain types of shoes where you want a glued construction. Overall, it's going to be relatively much more lightweight and with shoes that maybe you only want to keep for 500 miles of running, yeah, you want to go for a glued construction. Now, there are certain boot designs that actually work better with a type of glue in here and what you're looking for is something that's going to give you bounce, going to be relatively lightweight. My point here is to understand the different types of build and the advantages and disadvantages of each type of construction. When you understand that, you can find the right boots for you every time. Now, besides the way the upper is connected to the lower, how else can you tell if this is a quality made boot? So immediately, I'm going to look at the sole. The sole is where the rubber meets the road, literally on this pair of shoes right here. So I'm going to look at that heel and I'm going to notice, oh, great, they've got tacks. This is an old sign of quality. Uh, it adds an additional step and it's great. Most shoes, they're going to have multiple layers here in the heel. That's another great sign. You don't want to have a solid piece. You want to have multiple layers that are glued together. Most shoe companies are going to stop there, but what I like to look for are those tacks. What it does is help to reinforce that heel in case the glue were to fail. Next up, let's look at the construction of the upper. And the first thing I'm going to look at is the stitching. How is the stitching? How many basically stitches per inch do we have? I like to see at least eight. And what this tells me is that they went through with the machine relatively slow. They were going through. I want to make sure that they're all straight lines. If you see stitching all over the place and it's not meant to be zigzag, that is a bad sign. I like to see single stitches stitching. Occasionally, you will see double stitching, especially around the edges. That's fine when people go through with that double stitch to reinforce. Point being is pay attention to loose threads. Look at that stitching. It's a small thing that most people don't even pick up on. And there are some companies, they save money just by going with one layer of leather on the upper. You want to go for a company that's got a liner on the inside, even if they're relatively warm weather shoes. Why? Because that liner right there is designed to absorb a bit of sweat. Everyone's feet sweat whenever they're wearing their shoes and you want to make sure that it's not going right into the one part, the full part of the upper. That over time can actually cause the upper to crack and to degrade sooner than it should. Next up, let's talk about hardware. The metal pieces right here on the boot. One of the easiest ways to tell if it's a quality boot or not is if they've got this eyelet right over here that curves around. If you can bend that with your finger, that's not a great sign. It should be a little bit thicker, heavier of a metal, one that's relatively resistant to bending because, hey, you don't want this thing to bend and break off, you know, a couple months after you buy the boots. Other hardware details to pay attention to, especially boots with a little bit more flash on them. Just make sure, okay, how is this coated? Do you see any of the coating coming off? If they've got a zipper, you not only want to make sure that the zipper goes up and down, but I like it when the zipper has an inside protective lining so it doesn't catch on to anything and basically it's going to extend the life of the zipper and protect your feet. Next up, gents, let's talk about height. And boots have the advantage over shoes when it comes to height. Yeah, shoes will make you a little bit taller. Boots, two to three inches depending on the height of the heel. Why do you want to be taller? Because it's just going to make you more attractive. It's going to make you appear to be a leader. Is that fair? No, but it's the way that things are. Why not use it to your advantage? So there's this old story of Russell Crowe being at a party early in his career. He was trying to get a role and there was an important director there, important people he had to meet. And he was walking around without his shoes on. And the guy that, you know, his friend's like, hey, get your boots back on. You just looked at the role. Now you, I'm looking down on you. So point being is boots matter when it comes to adding on height. It's just physically going to make you look a little bit more masculine, a little bit more taller. And why not? Again, if it can do it, yeah, and they're comfortable, go for it. Next up, let's talk about protection. These boots right here, notice how high they go up. 
Why is this? This was based off a combat jump boot design. I mean, any of you guys jumped out of an airplane? Yeah, whenever you jump out, especially with the military, they don't give you the best parachutes. You're coming down really quick and you're supposed to have that multiple, what is it, like that five point roll. We know that doesn't happen. You end up hitting your head, getting knocked all over the place. And many of you guys know how dangerous it can be on your ankles and your feet whenever you're coming in for a hard landing. Point being is boots have been designed over time and over history to give more support to the ankles. An ankle injury can knock a guy out whenever you need to be able to go on a forced march. So, you're a little bit older or you're dealing with poor ankle support or you don't have the strongest ankles. Yes, you want to work on exercises that can make them stronger, but you might as well wear boots that are going to protect your ankles. Now, are most people going to need that? No, but day-to-day -day boot wearing, I would say, you know, from splashes, from grime, from any type of, you know, inclement weather getting in and down into your socks, a higher uphill is going to provide protection. Now, for the average guy, does he need that much support? Probably not, but it's still nice to be able to have that support even in a mid-size cut boot right here we've got a classic chukka design so the chukka comes out of the desert boot again lightweight but you're still going to give yourself a little bit of ankle support so what i like about boots like this versus shoes that are cut down so you're walking around you're getting sand you're getting rocks you're getting pebbles you're maybe getting you know a little bit of uh, snow you don't want to get that onto your socks a pair of boots like this is going to provide just enough protection for your day-to-day -day walking around most of the time you're not going through you know two or three feet of snow and even if you do this right here is going to have that coverage with the shoe, so we'll do a decent job of keeping it out. But if you've got a pair of shoes, they're cut so low, yeah, you're going to get stuff all over your socks. So these do still provide a lot more protection than a pair of shoes. Next up, let's talk about all the different style options. And some of you guys may argue, okay, that's not a huge advantage over shoes. I don't know. You got a little bit more surface area here, so you could actually argue, yeah, you've got more style options. And pretty much any style of shoe, you can almost see it in boots. So right here, we've got the moccasin style. I've talked about this before. What I love about moccasin style boots is the size of the toe box. This is going to make it a more comfortable type of boot, especially for guys that spend, you know, 16 hours a day on their feet. You're doing a construction job. You want a pair that's going to be able to give you traction on the sole and at the same time be able to give your feet room to expand. You got wider feet. Look for a moccasin style. But what if you're a businessman, you're a traveler, you're a commuter, you want something you don't have to think about, something that you can easily just wear, go to, get the job done, utilitarian. Look to a pair of Chelsea's, right? Right here in black. What I like about this, low maintenance. Yes, you'll have to polish every other day, clean off every day after you wear it. But if you're going to be going through sleet, you're going to be going through snow, you're going to be on an airplane, you want to be able to slip off going through security. This right here is a perfect design. Or maybe you want something in a classic style. At the same time, you want a bit more style with it. Look for broguing. Broguing, as you know, probably the history. This goes back to when shoes were worn in marshes. And the idea was the water could go in and go out because it's going to go in anyway. Point being is modern brogues don't have holes that go all the way through. The broguing is there more for design, for aesthetic purposes. And these are beautiful. At the same time, they're a classic design. So if you got already a pair of classic boots, but you want something with a little bit, yeah, a little bit more style, look to a pair of brogues. But what if you're just getting into boots and you're not sure about so much leather going that far up your ankles? Maybe you want to look for actually a mid ankle boot right here, a pair of scout design, this right here. And really, it's very similar to a pair of shoes, except maybe about an inch. It's going higher. It's going to provide just a bit of support, a lot more protection right here. But this is a good transition for a guy that really doesn't own too many if any pairs of boots and he wants to try something out at the same time, something that's familiar, something that's going to be similar to his shoes. Now, gents, I know you've got an opinion. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Did I make a decent case for why you should choose boots over shoes or I missed the mark? Let me know. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Next up, gents, let's talk about sex appeal. The ladies love boots. Don't believe me? Go check out this video right here. I go into great detail, talk about some of the data, some of the information, and I lay out all the points on why women love boots. Yeah, you wear boots, you're good. Yeah, the ladies love them. Click on this video right here to find out why.